In addition to diverse cultures and natural habitats, Taiwan is thought to be the origin of the Austronesian culture by international experts, Hawaiian linguist Robert Blust, Australian archaeologist Peter Bellwood, and American human sociologist Gerard Diamond. The Austronesian languages are the only language family in the world that is commonly spoken across the South Pacific Islands. The Austronesians began a mass immigration across the oceans approximately 6,000 years ago. There are currently around 541,000 indigenous people in Taiwan, recognized by the Taiwanese government. The 16 recognized indigenous tribes include the Amis, Atayal, Paiwan, Bunun, Paioma, Rukai, Zhou, Sasiat, Yami, the Taos, Tao, Kabalan, Turuku, Kazia, Sidi, Lualua, and Kanakanabu. The Taiwan indigenous tribes have preserved the ancient Austronesian languages and culture while having their own languages, folk cultures, and tribal structures. The Harvest Festival, Ancestral Spirits Festival, and various tribal totems best represent Taiwan's mysterious and diverse Aboriginal cultures. Voices of the Ami people have been recognized as a sound that pierces the heart and soul, while energizing the audience with their infectious music during many festivals. The diversity in the Ami's culture can be best witnessed at this harvest festival. The Ami's tribe is Taiwan's largest indigenous tribe, mainly distributed throughout the Hualien and Taidong areas, with a population of approximately 201,000. The majority of the Amis are found in Taidong City. Changes in time and employment needs have led to the immigration of the Amis to the city, and thus it becomes the largest urban indigenous tribe. Although the traditional Amis tribal society is typically matriarchal in nature, tribal public affairs and important festive activities are still dominated by the male gender. The tribal organization is tightly knit in accordance with the age structure of males. The traditional Ami social system equitably balances the power between men and women and thus creates a harmonious social relationship within the tribe. There are more than 40 traditional Ami's instruments and musical dances. The earliest forms mostly relate to agriculture. Few are aware of the existence of the nose flute, Woodpile and Jews Harp Guild of the Amis Tribe. The traditional Amis clothes are light in texture with bright colors that display the Amis people's passion and buoyant nature. During the annual age festival, the Amis across the island celebrate in the harvest festival in which the young and the old Amis dress in bright traditional clothes and unite in powerful lively dance. The Harvest Festival is the Amis New Year, a real representation of an Amis festive cultural activity to celebrate an abundant millet harvest, as well as to say thank you and pay tribute to ancestors for their blessings. Thus, in the Harvest Festival, one can see the rich and most complete form of the Amis culture. Although drastic changes in the society have had a heavy impact on the traditional Amis lifestyle and social morality during recent years, the bloodline of the Ami spirit will carry on through tribal festivals, rituals, and dances with each new generation. Oh, ha, hey! 
face tattooing is not just a symbol of glory, but also a way to distinguish different tribes. In the past, the Atayal men were required to perform headhunting, while the women were required to be skillful in weaving before they could receive a face tattoo. From a linguistic perspective, Atayals can be divided into two major phylums, the Sakaliaka and Saaulia. Differences exist between these two major phylums in terms of languages and the legends of origin. For example, the Sakaliaka originate from today's Binzuigan of Nanto County's Renai Township, while the Zaolie come from today's Papakuan of Dabajian Mountain. The Atayal are Taiwan's third largest indigenous tribe with approximately 86,000 people, occupying one-sixth of the total indigenous tribe population of Taiwan. The vast mountainous area between the altitudes of 500 and 2,500 meters within the Central Mountain Range and the Snow Mountain Range is recognized as traditional Atayal territory. The Atayal are a tribe that has deep respect for the ancestral spirits Udu and ancestral discipline Gaga. The traditional faith of the Atayal is based on the worship of the ancestral spirits, which they believe to have control over the lives of tribal members, as well as the ability to ensure an abundant crop harvest, bountiful hunting, and safety. The annual land cultivation rituals with their focus on the millet cultivated by the Atayal are as follows. The land cultivation festival in February, the Sidin festival in March, the Weed Rittens festival in May, the Reaping festival in July, the Harvest festival in August, and the New Crop festival, the New Crop tasting festival, and the Ancestral Spirits festival in September. Kaka originally meant a form of systematic regulations dictated by the ancestors. However, it has gradually evolved into a group of bloodlines, offering sacrifice to ancestors, territory and food sharing, in which tribal members work together in a strong group spirit of collaboration to ensure equality and social responsibility and sharing. Atayal men are experts in bamboo weaving and knotted netting techniques, while the women are skillful in cloth weaving techniques. The Jews' Harp Guild Dance nicely displays the Atayal tribal attributes. If one has the opportunity to attend the Paiwan wedding, one will be surprised by the comprehensiveness of the Paiwan social caste system, morality system, and regulations. The Paiwan claim their origin to be the Dawu Mountain and are currently residing in the mountainous area below 1,000 meters, or flatland area with southern Taiwan as their active zone. The total Paiwan population is approximately 96,000. The various tribes traditionally refer to each other as Kakalisian and Suwutsu and Sabaiwan, and now are all categorized under the name of Baiwan. From the north to the south and the east, the Paiwan people recognize six distinct branches of Paiwan. The northern group, the Rapar, the Wutsu, the middle group, the Jalagavus, is characterized by Japanese scholars as the northern group the Javugufugu wood, the southern group, the Badiladilao, the eastern group, the Bagalugalu. The Paiwan social caste system can be divided into six levels, chief, assistant officer, general leader, deputy manager, priest, and commoners. Each carries out their duties responsibly in accordance with their social titles. The ten major festivals of the supernatural and polytheist Paiwan include the five-year festival, Malabu, at the harvest festival, Masalu. Their belief in ancestral spirits worship is closest to their daily life. The Paiwan society is built on equal rights, both matriarchic and patriarchic systems, and air succession. Their culture is based on the concept of living in harmony with nature, 
and rejects the concept of criminal punishment. The Pai Wan have a strict taxation system and a built a sharing society based on the concept that regards the tribe as one family to create a society with no poverty or theft. Their fine-tuned social system integrating all tribal factions has nurtured the exquisite Dawu Mountain culture originating from the Paiwan civilization. The Bunun's world-renowned Pasubububut, or Song for Praying for an Abundant Millet Harvest, can be heard during this Millet Sidin Festival, which takes place between November and December each year, to wish for an abundant millet harvest. During the festival, the Bunun men form a circle and sing this song to pray for an abundant millet harvest that year. The Bunun believe that by using beautiful voices to please the gods, the gods will grant an abundant millet harvest in return. Thus everyone must sing with a sincere heart. The Bunun's singing, presented through an eight-part harmony, is unique in the world and found only in Taiwan. The Bunun harmonic singing can be heard in every corner of the tribal villages. Songs for drinking wine or songs in tribute to guns are all performed through harmonic singing. Bunu musical instruments include the Jews harp gill, a bow-shaped string instrument, and a unique type of four-stringed harp. All are played for the entertainment of tribal members. Before the Japanese occupation, the Bunu led a life on slash and burn cultivation and shifting cultivation. They were mainly found along the two slopes of the central mountain range. Living at an altitude above 1,500 meters, the Banun are a typical high mountain tribe, with their social organization centering on a large patriarchic family. Their current population is around 56,000. The mountain-dwelling Banun are experts at hunting. The festive Malataki activity or ear shooting festival is held each year during the off season to wish for an abundance of prey as well as family and community prosperity. In addition, due to the importance of the millet harvest, the Bunun have also developed a series of intricate and regular seasonal festivals. Some traditional perspectives on year and month are based on the growth period of millet. Thus, the schedule for conducting agricultural affairs and hunting activities also proceeds in accordance with the growth of plants and the phases of the moon. After hanging the portrait of the luck symbols, the Chinese moccasin and the sun god, the chief priest chants a prayer to thank the heavens and pray for crop abundance and tribal safety in the upcoming year. The brave tribal warriors jump over a bonfire to symbolize the riddance of demons, evil spirits and unlucky objects. The Rukai base their agricultural activities mainly on millet planting. In August of each year, the harvest ritual is held to let the land rest and to conduct various rituals for individuals, families, clans, and tribes.
The current Rukai population is around 12,000, residing along the foot of the northern central mountain range located in Wutai Township in Pingdong County, Maoling District of Kaohsiung City, and Bainan Township of Taidong County. The Rukai ancestors were said to have come from a certain corner of Taidong's coastal area, led by hounds, snow leopards, and a serpent eagle in their journey to Kutsapokanna. Thus, the land of the Rukai is also known as the home of snow leopards. The social caste system of the Rukai is divided into four levels, chief, noble families, officers and commoners with family inheritance, succession by the eldest son or daughter. In order to display the social status and power of the current chief, elaborate home furnishings and decorations can be seen in the traditional slate house. The gathering place with various wood or stone decorative art pieces, such as an ancestral pole and shrine, is established outside the slate house. A special rukai custom is to wear decorations made with lilies, as a symbol of female purity and outstanding male bravery. The Rukai skills in creating indigenous art are delicate and detailed, as evidenced in their bamboo baskets, shell flower sheets, stone carvings, and slate embossment. In addition, the image and pattern of the Chinese moccasin are believed to be the incarnations of the ancestral spirits by the Rukai and symbolize that the Rukai are descendants of the Chinese moccasin. From mid-December to January the following year, the Puyuma hold a series of festive rituals, the annual youth festival or the Basibas, also known as the monkey ritual, the big hunt festival or Malayo for the men of the tribe, and the welcoming of the triumphant return ritual or Galazapo, held by the women of the tribe. The annual festivals of the Puyuma include a series of good news brought by young adults starting from the end of the year ancient song sung by the elder to the grieving family at the beginning of the year for the purpose of giving comfort and ridding bad luck, and the male adult ceremony. In addition to annual festivals, there are also the Muhammud, the completion of weed riddens by the women, and Mulaliaban, the sea festival. These two along with Basibas, the annual youth festival, and Malayo. The Big Hunt Festival are the four major festive events of the Puyuma tribe. The Puyuma are mainly found in Taidong City and Bainan Village, with a total population of approximately 13,000. The power of the Puyuma king during the Qing occupation once spread north to Hualien and south to Pingdong. Later, due to the Japanese occupation, the Puyuma immigrated, scattered, and broke up into eight clans or tribes. Thus, they are also known as Bashifan, or the Eight Clan Aborigines. The Buyuma can be divided into the Nangwan system of bamboo origin, Zhusheng, the Jirban system of stone origin, Shusheng. The Puyuma have earned their reputation as the tribe of garlands. The traditional Puyuma society is matriarchic, with its focus on male age group organization. The gathering place for young adults, or Bakuban, is a Spartan education and training center, while the gathering place for the elders, or Balaguan, serves as a center for making tribal affairs decisions. The Puyuma initiated contact with other tribes during their early development. In addition to maintaining their own indigenous heritage, the Puyuma also incorporated characteristics of various other tribes. Their fortune-telling, 
witchery, etiquette and customs, songs and dances, agriculture, hunting, embroidery, clothing and architecture form a tightly knit cultural system. In an attempt to pass on cultural inheritance and gather common tribal consensus, the Puyuma have held a joint annual festival starting from 1989, which is hosted by the tribes on a rotation basis. This festival has become one of Taidong's most significant festive events and is representative of the indigenous culture there. Mayasvi, or War Festival, or Triumphant Return Festival, is a tribal event celebrated by the entire Zhou tribe. The time of the War Festival is unfixed. Sometimes it occurs several times a year, or it may not occur at all. The festival takes place around February 15th of each year, after consensus is reached at a meeting of the elders. The War Festival is held mainly to worship the Heavenly God and the War God. Held at the gathering place and the open space in front of it, the War Festival's most important meaning is to inspire the Joe to protect the tribe with their lives and spirit, as well as to pray for the blessings of the War God. The Zhou tribe has a total population of approximately 6,700, with their main distribution in the Rift Valley area of the Alishan mountain range. The Zhou are mainly hunters, and leather jackets and hats are the most commonly worn outfits during hunting. The social organization of the Zhou tribe is known for its strict patriarchic clan structure with a focus on political organizations affiliated with both large and small branches. Tribal affairs and rituals take place at the Kuba or male meeting place. The social caste system did not prevent the Zhou from the formation of a tight family structure, which closely monitors marriage or sacrifice offering procedures to propagate the customs throughout the entire tribe. The war festival is the most important tribal ritual of the Zhou tribe. From the festival process to their dances and songs, it is not difficult to see that the Zhou have already clearly distinguished the relationships between man and God, as well as between man and man. The War Festival is also extremely important in maintaining tribal morality, regulations, and mental stamina. Known for its traditional Fasa Ai, or Dwarf Spirit Festival, the mysterious Saisyat are found mainly in the mountainous areas bordering Shinju and Miali counties. According to linguistics theory, the Saisyat language is one of the most ancient Austronesian languages and possibly appeared very early in Taiwan. There are around 6,400 Saisyat people. 
patriarchic in social structure, the Saisyap base their social organization by using territories and totem clans, as well as using animal or natural phenomena with clan names such as wind or fong, sun or ru, summer, sha, water for washing rice, pan, crab, xie, bean, do, and so on. A clear list of ritual tasks is assigned in accordance with different last names, including the Rain Festival, hosted by the Pan family, Sunshine Prayer Festival, hosted by the Sha and Xie families, Wind Calming Festival, hosted by the Elder Foam, and Headhunt Festival, hosted by the Elder Doe. The Saishat, Hakka people, and Atayal maintained a friendly and intimate relationship due to the geological closeness of their home territories. The profound influence of material culture has led to the older generation Saishat gaining an awareness of the importance of preserving all the Saishat ritual customs. The partnership agreement between Saishat Tribe and Xueba National Park Headquarters of the Construction and Planning Agency of Ministry of the Interior was signed between the National Park and the Saishat Tribe in Wufong Township. It is the first agreement signed between a government agency and an indigenous tribe in Taiwan's history. Ever since the agreement, the Saishat have more actively thought about how to forge tribal consensus in the pursuit of autonomy. The Saishat have followed the footsteps of their ancestors in meeting future challenges. These efforts further display the Saishat's unique traditional culture and spirit. Each year, between March and June, flocks of flying fish return to the waters of Lanyu following the black tide. Prior to capturing the flying fish, the Yami hold a festival known as the Flying Fish Summon Festival to summon the flying fish. The Yami can be found on the Lanyu island of Taidong with a population of around 4,400. Lanyu's tropical marine climate brings hot weather and frequent typhoons. The Yami accordingly develop semi-cave dwellings. The Yami tribe is a peace-loving tribe and has developed a unique ocean and culture due to its geographical isolation. Among their cultural attributes, the flying fish season during spring and summer is the most well-known tribal custom. The flying fish are a gift given to the Yame by the heavens and they're an important source of food. The age festival held year-round mostly coincides with the capturing of the flying fish. Thank mm -hmm. you.